Good morning everyone. Yan, magandang umaga po sa kanilang lahat. Paki-greet niyo naman yung inyong mga katabi. Sabi sa Batangas yung inyong mga kadais. Yan, yung inyong mga kadais. Magandang umaga po sa kanilang lahat. Welcome sa ating pong uh, uh, worship service para sa nasa kanila mga tahanan. Welcome po sa online worship service ng Green Hills Christian Fellowship. In Psalms chapter 5, verses 7 to 8. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. Nais ko pong basahin sa Tagalog. Ngunit dahil sa iyong dakilang pagmamahal, makakapasok ako sa iyong tahanan. Ikay sambahin ko sa templo mong banal. Luluhod ako tanda ng aking paggalang. Patnubayan mo ako, Yahweh, sa iyong katwiran. Dahil napakarami na sa aking humahad lang. Landas mong matuwid ay aking ipapaalam upang ito'y aking laging masundan. Sa umaga pong ito, nawa tayo'y makapasok sa uh, layunin ng Panginoon sa ating pagsamba. Maluwalhati natin siya sa ating pag-awit at pagpupuri sa ating Diyos na buhay. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Amen. A blessed Sunday, people of God. Let us all rise and praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give God the best club offering, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, people of God. Let's celebrate. Jesus, God is great. Sing to the Lord. All creation, Christ.
the most powerful God, Jesus. You are so faithful, you are so good, oh God. We honor you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head And I will sing Of the goodness of God Lift your hands All my life And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so the goodness of God. I love your voice. In darkest night, in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend.
at Panginoon. Awitin ko man lahat ng awit sa mundo di kaya Ilarawan ang mo, ang lahat ng tulang. 
ating Diyos. We give you all the glory, honor, and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us come to the Lord in prayer this morning. Uh, even those who are uh, worshiping us with us online can join us in prayer. And in the midst of our prayer, um, you can utter your personal prayer request. Tayo po ay dumulog sa panalangin. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. Pinupuri ka namin. Ilulwalhati ka namin, O Diyos. Tunay nga, wala kang katulad, O Diyos. Words are not enough. Hayaan mo na sa pagkakataong ito, ma-express po namin ang amin pong damdamin, ang aming pagmamahal, ang aming pagsamba, O Diyos. Sa umagang ito, nagpapakumbaba kami na lumalapit sa iyo. Asking, Lord, for your forgiveness sa lahat ng mga pagkukulang, our shortcomings, sa lahat ng mga pagkakamali, pagkakasala namin pong nagawa. Cleanse us, Lord, your most precious blood. Hayaan mo na sa umagang ito, we can come, we can come before your holy throne of grace nang may kasiguraduhan that you will hear us hindi dahil sa aming katuwiran, hindi dahil sa aming sariling katwiran, hindi dahil sa aming mga sariling gawa kundi dahil sa iyong habag at awa na ipinagkaloob sa amin. At salamat po Panginoon for that unmerited favor and grace na iyong pinagkaloob. Sa magang ito, we continue to pray for our nation. Patuloy namin pinapanalangin ng aming bansa, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, declaring that Jesus Christ is Lord over this nation. Dalangin po namin yung mga concerns ng bansa, Panginoon, especially sa mga karamihan ng aming pong mga kababayan, kakaranas ng um, uh, shortcoming sa kanila mga pangangailangan due to the pandemic. Lord, we pray for your favor. Be upon them, O God. Be upon us, Panginoon. Even those who are affected by this uh, a virus, we pray for healing. We pray for your comfort for those who are infected by this virus. Even the families, dalangin namin ang iyong pagkuko, ang iyong pagyakap, ang iyong pagpapalakas. And even those families na namatayan, Panginoon, during these times, Lord, comfort them. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will strengthen them, Lord, with your presence in their lives. At sa nakararanas, Panginoon, ng mga depression, anxiety, Lord, we pray na ikaw din ang magbibigay ng hope. Ikaw ang magpapakita ng pag-asa, Panginoon, sa bawat isa na nakararanas ng mga depression and anxiety na ito. Even, even Lord, for those who are in need sa kakapusan, sa mga nawalan ng trabaho, sa mga naapektuhan ng mga business, Lord, we pray for your provision sa bawat isa. Salamat na ikaw ang Diyos na nagkakaloob, nagbibigay ng aming po mga pangangailan. We pray for our locality here in Batangas province. Dalangin po namin, maging sa mga nanunungkulan, we pray that you will continue, Lord, to touch their hearts na yung mga pangangailangan ng mamamayan, ng amin po mga kababayan, Panginoon, ay maipagkaloob, matulungan yung mga higit na mga nangangailangan. Salamat po na ikaw din ang Diyos na kukupkup sa bawat isang kababayan po namin. 
especially na Panginoon na babalita namin na yung bulkang taal ay nagaalboroto na naman. Lord, we pray for your mercy, God. Ano man layunin mo, Panginoon, so be it, Lord. But we pray for your mercy, for your grace, for your favor to our kababayan, Lord. Especially doon sa lugar na malapit doon sa taal. And even to every family, Lord, represented here right now, and even to those who are online worshiping with us, Lord, as they utter their prayer this time, we pray that you will continue to listen, O God, and hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for this uh, time as we worship you this morning. Dalangin po namin ang iyong pagkilos, Panginoon, sa aming pong kalagitnaan. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching us, touching our lives, Lord. And even, Lord, uh, uh, moving in our midst, speak to us as we hear your word, as we worship you, as, as we give our offerings, as we have fellowship, Lord, salamat na ikaw ay ikilo sa aming kalagit na at maranasan namin ang pag-ibig ng bawat isa na nagpapalakas at nagbibigay Panginoon ng pag-asa sapagkat ikaw ang naglagay sa puso ng bawat isa ng pag-ibig na iyo. Pangunahan mo po kami sa aming pag-aaral ng iyong salita, sa aming pong pananambahan, maranasan namin ang kagalakan, Panginoon, mula sa aming puso. And we are even excited to hear your word. And even surprise us, God. Surprise us ng mga bagay na hindi namin inaasahan na tunay nga na masasabi namin na ikaw ay buhay at tunay na Diyos na pamikilos sa buhay namin. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Tayo po ay dadako sa ating pong uh, pagkakaloob ng our offerings. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 17 Sa Tagalog ko po babasahin Maganda yung translation sa Tagalog Pakinggan nyo po Mas masarap ang isang plato ng gulay na inihaing may pag-ibig ay sa isang matabang baka na inihaing may galit. Mga kapatid, as we offer our offering unto God, let us offer it with love, sincerely from our hearts. Tapagat alam natin ng pagkakalob natin ay bukal sa ating Ipanalangin po natin ang ating mga offerings. Kayo din po na kasama po natin sa ating online worship. May mga bank details po diyan. You can uh, deposit your offerings. At para dito mamaya, after our prayer, you can drop your offering dun po sa likod sa offering box. Tayo po'y manalangin. Father in heaven, thank you 
salamat dahil pinapaalalahanan mo kami that we offer, Lord, yung mga offerings na ito ng may kagalakan sa aming puso, may pagmamahal. Alam po namin, Panginoon, that you desire that heart of us na nag pintig ng puso namin na ipagkalob ito na may kagalakan. Salamat po sa iyong biyaya na ipinagkalob na at binabalik namin, Panginoon, na may kagalakan ang aming po mga kalob na ito. We honor you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Purihin po ang Panginoon. Morning. Papansin ba nyo pag nagbayad kayo ng pera sa kahera, ginagawa ng kahera, tinitingnan, lalo na kung 1,000 bill. Diba? Tinitingnan niya kung si Tito, big or joy ba yung nakalagay doon? Masyado pa ako yung bata para maintindihan joke na yon. Para po sa aming mga mga non-millennials po yung joke na yon. Uh, more so, di ba, yung check eh. Pag inisyo ang kanyang check eh, uh, we check. Kasi meron tayong annual mistake, especially at the beginning of the year, right? We put the, may siguro meron pa kayo natanggap check eh. January or February, nakalagay 2020 pa rin. That's an annual mistake kasi the year has changed. Uh, Nakaugali na for one year, nilalagay mo year 2020. Ngayon, dapat 2021. So we check for error, right? Just to make sure na yung tinagap natin check eh, ay ayos. More so, if we deal in, in you know, mas malalim na dealings like, like, like purchasing of uh, properties or yung kontrata, sinecheck talaga natin, we check for error. We check truth. We don't want it to be in error, right? The more important things that we deal with, the more that we bring efforts and due diligence in order to find the truth or to find error and correct it. Tama po ba? Now, as Christians, we are called to check truth. We would not allow ourselves to be just, you know, swayed away by by popular teachings. Um, tulad na rin mga kasabihan, hindi po ba? Ano po bang kinalaman ng bago ka umuwi galing sa burol, eh kailangan magpagpag ka muna. Ano ba naman ang kinalaman nun? Unless gusto mo lang talaga mag-Starbucks muna bago umuwi, ginagawa mo dahilan yon, hindi po ba? Mga guilty po, yung mga ating mga pastoral care team, mga guilty po sila. Alam naman nilang walang kinalaman, pero magkakape muna bago mo eh, pagaling sa burol. Di po ba? Uh, <laughs> Disire ko lang po nalaman <laughs> na bawal din pumunta sa burol kapag may sugat ka. <laughs> Disire ko lang narinig yon. 54 years old na ako. This year ko lang nalaman. Bawal daw pumunta sa burol kapag ikay may, may sugat. Hindi daw gagaling. We praise God that God has inspired prophets, apostles to write down His teachings, His ways so that we will have the hard copy of what is true. And we are just thankful that God in His wisdom chose to do such. Because kung wala to, then ang paniniwalaan na lang na natin ay kung anong sinabi ng nakatatanda, sinabi ng iba, or even popular preachers, which is very, very true today. Go to the internet. You will find teachers, preachers, popular speakers that are known worldwide and yet 
if you listen well, once, twice, thrice, you will find that their messages can be inconsistent with what God really is saying. Ganon, kailangan talaga tayong mag-ubos ng panahon, oras, upang malaman natin ano ba talaga ang katotohanan sapagkat buhay na walang hanggan ang pinag-uusapan dito. Sapagkat life after death ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Sapagkat sino bang tunay na Diyos ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. And the more that we should check truth. In today's message, we will cover 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 to 6 in continuation with our sermon series on the book of 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Here we will find three things that John wants us to, to put in our minds with regard to checking truth. Sige po, uh, atin pong basahin yung mga verses. Kasama po kayo sa inyong mga tahanan. Sabay-sabay po nating basahin yung mga verses. Shall we all stand and read the scripture together? All right. Together. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see where, whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world. And the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, be with us, O Lord. Alert our minds. Teach us your truth. We know, o Lord, that you are working in our hearts, in our minds, because this reminding of Christ's teaching is from you. So we submit ourselves to you, Lord. Put our minds to focus on your word so that we will hear straight from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pupo tayo. Salamat po. All right. Lesson number one. Authentic disciples differentiate between God led from false prophets. Verse one reads, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Huwag daw basta-basta ang maniniwala. Lalo't lalo na kung ito ay basta na lang namin, natin nakita. Maring ang napaka-popular, napakagaling magsalita. I-test daw itong tagapagturo na to. But test the spirits to, say, to see whether they are from God. Kapansin nyo? Plural. Ibig sabihin, marami. Marami ang mga huwad na nagtuturo. It is a sad note because sometimes we tend to relax. Minsan, hinahayaan na lang natin um, Dahil nga maganda ang pagkakabigkas, maganda ang pagkakalayout, um, basta-basta na lang tayo naniniwala. At nakakalungkot, minsan, ipinapasa pa natin. 
Um, sana naman, after this message, uh, wala, nang, wala na sa atin na magsasabing, Pastor, ang ganda po ng mensahe. Whether it be coming from me or from others. Okay? Wala nang ganun magsasabing. Pastor, ang galing ng mensahe niyo. Pag tinanong ko kayo, ano natutunan mo, at wala kang maalala, pagagalitan kita. Kaya wag mo na ako sabihan na, Pastor, ganda ng message, bless na bless ako. Ano natutunan mo? Hindi ko maalala eh. Nakakalungkot nga, minsan may nagsabi sa akin eh. Pastor, umaten ako ng isang seminar. Ang galing po nang nag-preacher. Nakakatawa po siya, tawa kami ng tawa. <laughs> Tinanong ko siya. Ano pong natutunan niyo? Tumungo. Basta po, ang galing niya. <laughs> Tuwantuwa pa kami, tawa pa kami ng tawa. It's a sad fact of life that it's really happening today, even among Christians. So here at Greenest Christian Fellowship, we are encouraging you, we are prompting you, we are inviting you to Bible study groups, to growth groups. Uh, as a matter of fact, we will have a new believers growth group that Elder Rowell will be teaching. We want you to be grounded in the Word of God. Uh, when I, at the beginning of the year, shared with you what an authentic disciple looks like, he should be doctrinally stable, not easily swayed here and there by cunning deceitfulness of false prophets. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many pro false prophets have gone out into the world. And this is the time of John. Marami ng false prophets. And Jesus himself said, when, when the end time is about to come, ang maraming maraming false prophets ang lalabas. Here's a short checklist. Pwede natin tanungin ang sarili natin when we hear a teaching. Is it consistent with the Word of God? Is it within the Apostles' teachings? Apostles' teachings, kasi sabi nga dito ni John, uh, at the end of, at verse 6, he said, uh, But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. Why is it so important that what we believe in is from the apostles because apostles, well, the literal meaning of apostle, apostle is sent one. Okay, isang apostol ay sent one. But in the context of the scripture, when we talk about apostles, they were the ones who were with Jesus. They were the ones whom Jesus chose, the twelve, in order to teach them, in order to disciple them, in order to show them with his life what God really is. And so, these apostles are the foundation, their foundational teachings are but very important. And so we have to go back to their teachings. We have to go back to the scripture, what the apostles had written. Number three, is the teacher living in the truth of scriptures? Isinasabuhay ba nung nagtuturo? yung kanyang itinuturo. And that's very important. And that's a checklist for me as a preacher. Am I leaving out what I'm preaching? Same with our elders, same with our deacons, deaconesses, same with our growth group leaders, disciples. It is an important checklist for each one of us. Isinasabuhay ba natin ang ating itinuturo? This is a short checklist, but if you we all recall, nung last year po, nag-sermon series tayo sa 1 Peter, 2 Peter. At nung nag-preach po ko sa 2 Peter, mayroon po akong dalawang sermons patungkol sa false prophets. So gusto ko pong uh, to share with you again some of the points that I shared to the congregation. Stand against false teachings. Yung pong sinabi ni Peter. Peter, uh, was one of the apostles, si Pedro. At yung sermon na yon, 
Pinabalaan po tayo sapagkat may mga false teachers. So how do we identify false teachers? Number one, false teachers introduce heresies. Mga katuraan na wala naman sa Biblia. Kahit gano kaganda yan, kahit gano ka... I, I hope that as we mature in faith, we will be able to distinguish between scriptural teaching or biblical teaching from that of motivational messages. Sapagkat posibleng motivational yung mensahe, pero hindi siya talaga galing sa Biblia. Okay? False teachers live and endorse an immoral lifestyle. Paano po nila ginagawa yun? God is love. God will forgive you for His love. True. It is biblical. God is love because God so loved us that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is true. God is love. But if your preacher just stays with that and does not teach you the other attributes of God, then you should be on alert sapagkat hindi lang po God is love, but God is only, also holy, He is also just, He also disciplines, and He judges. And the graces and grace of God will cover us because God is the God not only of love, but also holy, just, False teachers, out of greed, exploit others with false words. Nagmanipula ng ibang tao. Paano ba nila ginagawa yun? Sabi ng mga false teachers, you are free to do whatever needed to satisfy your appetite. I'm using Matthew chapter 4, yung pong record ng temptation ni Jesus. Doon pa, may mga lessons po tayo matutunan. Pero ang katunayan, sabi ng Biblia, Christians have been set free to live by the word of God. Yung freedom po natin ay hindi para gawin kung ano lang gusto ng ating pagnanasa, lalo na makasalanan ng pagnanasa. Hindi po ganun. Our freedom is that we are free to live out God's Word. False teachers say that Christians will never go through suffering. Hindi po totoo yun. Hindi dahil ikaw ay manan ng pata, wala ka ng pagdadaanan na pagsubok. Hindi ka na magkakasakit. Hindi po totoo yun. At kung meron nagsasabi sa'yo, sumama ka sa aming church, sa aming iglesia, hindi ka na magkakasakit. Balik tarin mo lang ang payong mo. Bababasa ka ng ulan. But the Bible says, Christians experience and overcome suffering according to the purpose of God. And mind you, when the scripture tells us to rejoice when you face suffering, I see the work of God so that your faith will be strengthened, that you will come out of that trial, leaping in bounds in your faith and in maturity. or even while you are in the midst of that trial, you will sense how God will put faith beyond what you have been trying to, to learn for the past decade or two. But because of that trial, your faith will be deepened beyond what you can imagine. Most teachers say Christians will surely become financially prosperous. At yan ang madalas mo marinig sa mga false prophets. Go to the internet. You will see, especially in America, you will see stadium, auditoriums with 20,000, 50,000 people and listen to their message. It is all about being prosperous. But the Bible says, Christians shall worship and serve the Lord our God above all 
riches. Ano pa ba? Patukos sa false pa? How can we identify false teachers? False teachers will eventually face judgment. Don't worry about that. False teachers who are selfish and arrogant and tight unsteady souls. Arrogant, sabi nung first sa, sa book of Peter. Kasi nga, yung mga false teachers, pakiramdam nila, infallible sila. Hindi sila nagkakamali. Anong sinabi nila? Yun na. Okay? What the Bible really say, says is, the scripture is inerrant and infallible. Ang salita ng Diyos, ang infallible. Yung sinabi ng Diyos, ang infallible. Hindi yung mga cult leaders. Okay. And I'm glad that the Lord has established Christian Green Hills Christian Fellowship where, wherein we have accountability. Okay. Meron po tayo, tayo po ay congregational, yun po highest body, meron po tayong plurality of elders na we, we, we are accountable to each other, we, we ask each other questions. As a matter of fact, I'm so blessed with our, with our Board of Elders weekly meeting that we talk about Scripture, we talk about how we can sharpen one another with regard to our preachings, to our life. We're so blessed that we are in church wherein, well, hindi po akong cultic leader because the others can ask me and check me. Cultic leaders, our teachings say, leaders only have the authority to read and interpret sacred writings. Pag meron po kayong napuntahang church na yun ang sinasabi, oh, yung mga, mga blindness lang, ang pwede magbasa ng Biblia, at mag- huwag kang magbabasa, makinig ka na lang sa kanila. Beware. Tapagkat, Christians who examine the scriptures every day are commended to be noble. And that's why here, we want you to do your daily devotion. We want you to read the scripture. We want you to join Bible study groups so that you can learn directly from the scripture what God is saying. False teachers love gain by wrongdoing. False teachers are worthless slaves of their own corruption. We need to differentiate between God-led prophets from false prophets. So, ano pong application? So, paano po natin gagawin yun? Yung aking application point po ay walang words, pero picture lang. Ano pong nakikita niya sa picture? At sana yung picture na yun tumatak po sa isipan nating lahat. Papakabisi po natin. Uh, pagising pa lang. Kailangan magluto. Kailangan magwalis. Kailangan magalaga ng bata. Napakabisi po natin. Pero sana po, gawang pa rin natin ng paraan. Take time to read the Word of God. Meditate on it and apply it in our life. Para po, ma-differentiate natin kung ano yung tamang katuruan at yung galing sa Biblia. So that's point number one. Lundud na ba kayo sa information? Yung hindi pa, kasang kamay. Okay, hindi pa. So, mas malalim po yung sasabihin ko sa sunod, kaya hindi mag-stretch muna. O kaya, tulad ng isang pastor from Singapore na lagi niya sinasabi, tagalugin ko na lang para maiba. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Uy, gising na! Pagsabi nga sa katabi mo, Uy, gising na! Alright. Second lesson. Authentic disciples confess Jesus Christ incarnate. This is very foundational, very important, very dogmatic, very theological. So, wag muna kayong kukurap for the next 10-15 minutes. Okay? Verse 2. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. 
And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Balikan po natin yung nangyayari nung dekadang yon. May mga false teachers, yung Gnosticism, narinig nyo from me. They, they think that all matters are evil, spirit is good, so hindi nila ma-reconcile that God who is spirit would take on the form of a man in matter. And so they reject Jesus Christ as God incarnate. Now, in our context, we are struggling to understand what does it mean that God must take on the form of a human? How can a spirit become matter? How can Jesus Christ be both God and man wherein one plus one should be two? How come one plus one equals one? There is only one in Jesus Christ, both God and man. We also struggle. Baka 50% God, 50% man si Jesus. But that's also incorrect to say that because, when, because Jesus it's 100% God, 100% human. Yes, it's beyond our human understanding, but that's what we will find if we cover the scripture from the beginning to the end. There is nothing here that would say that Jesus is just mere man. There's nothing here that would say that Jesus is only God, but not man, but both are true. Jesus is both God and man, 100% God, 100% man. Now today you will find false teachings with regard to this. You will find some groups out there, they are very prosperous, but they will tell you that Jesus is not God. Now throughout history, people are even church leaders tried to explain. And so I will present to you some of the teachings throughout the history. And these are man's attempt to explain such, such a truth beyond what we can understand. In Second Peter, we are one again, false teachers deny who Jesus Christ is. And false teachers reject Christ and return to their own wickedness. So ano ba yung mga uh, katuruan na false teachings on Christ? Docetism, taught by civilians in the first century. And sabi nila, mukha lang naging tao si Jesus. Kaya natin intindin din sila kasi hindi nga ma-explain eh. So, sabi nila, mukha lang naman nag naging tao si Jesus. So, in short, sabi nila, not human, divine. They deny the true humanity of Jesus. Okay, that's one. Another is ebionism. Second century. And sabi nila, Jesus was an ordinary human on whom Christ descended as a dove during his water baptism. Jesus possessed the power of God's presence of which the, the Christ in him withdrew near his death on the cross. He was not pre-existent. So, di ba? They're trying to make sense. Si Jesus, human lang siya, pero nung binaptay siya, bumaba ang si God sa kanya. Pero nung mamamatay na siya sa krus, iniwanan na siya ni God, ni Christ. Nagtao na uli siya. Okay? So, again, man trying to explain. But this is, again, denying the divinity of Jesus Christ. Hindi po to si 
Hindi po to local, okay? Bishop po siya nung 4th century. Ang sabi po niya, Jesus had human body but not human mind and spirit. His mind was divine. Diba? Tinatry na intindihin pero hindi niya lubos ang rimaintindihan. Not human daw denies the true humanity again. So naman, si Arius, Jesus was created by the Father. He was the first and highest created being. Jesus was only similar but not co-equal with the Father. So, mas mababang pagka-Diyos ang sinasabi niya patungkol kay Jesus. So, sinasabi niya, hindi truly divine si Jesus. Ito naman, si Nestorius, 5th century. Jesus had two persons, was in you, is human person, another is divine person. Denies union of person. So, <laughs> dalawang hindi naging isa. Okay. So again, not divine. Ito naman, mahirap po basahin, hindi ko nababasahin. Ang sabi lang niya, <laughs> Jesus had only one nature. His human nature was absorbed by the divine nature that resulted into a third nature. Diba? So, trying to explain, but now he's saying, he this is denying the true divinity and humanity of Jesus Christ. Okay. Pakasabi ulit sa katabi mo, Gising na. So we go back to the scripture. And I'm going to invite you to read with me John chapter 1. And as you read, we will read this slowly. I want you to absorb the words of God. Declaring that Jesus Christ is both God and man. In one person, 100% God, 100% man. Read with me. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. And this is what the Word of God declares. Jesus is God who took on humanity. He is God, 100% God, who added to Himself the form of a complete human. Hypostatic union. Okay. Sabi nyo nga, hypostatic union. Yan, para pag uwi nyo, uy, alam ko yung salita ko yan, hypostatic union. Okay? Ang sinasabi po ng Union na to. The second person, the pre-incarnate Christ, came and took to himself a human nature and remains forever undiminished, deity and true humanity, united in one person forever. The union of two natures, God and divine, God and human, in one person. So when Jesus was walking on the water, he was both God and man. 
hindi, hindi po naiwanan yung pagka-humanity. When he was thirsty, he was both God and man. When he was healing the inside the synagogue, the one who cannot stand up, he was both God and man. When he was tired and he needed some rest, he was both God and man. And why did he do that? Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death to the cross. Now, the next time you remember that term, hypostatic union, remember how much God loves you. Why would such a God humble himself in the form of a servant, in the form of a man, why will he do that? And he did it while we were yet sinning. Why? I hope the term hypostatic union will prompt you to trust Jesus completely and surrender your life to him. And devote your life in loving him and serving him. Such God who created all things and yet chose to humble himself. And not just to take on the form of a human. His mission was to become obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. And you know what a death on the cross means, right? It's a death for criminals in that time. He died a criminal's death. Though he was without sin, he was placed on the cross to die for you and for me. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I have lesson number three, but at this point, I would like to pause and each of us, lahat po tayo ay pansamantalang manalangin po. Let's bow, close our eyes, and reflect. Ito bang nanampalataya na ako sa aking Panginoong Jesus? Totoo bang tinanggap ko na siya bilang aking Panginoon? Totoo bang isinuko ko na ang buhay ko sa Kanya? Alam natin na siya ang Diyos na nagkatuan tao upang ibigay ang Kanyang buhay do sa krus para sa kabayaran ng ating kasalanan. Totoo ba 
na ako'y nag, nakahandang makinig sa kanya at gawin ang nais niya. Dito sa lupa, sa pamagitan ng aking buhay na pansamantala para sa kalulhatian ng aking Diyos na pangwalang hanggan. And I pray indeed, Lord, that each one present here and those of us and those of joining us through online, Lord, I pray that you will speak to them, bring into their hearts the truth of who you are and how much you love them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Sidonian Creed declares that Christ is truly God, called substantial with God. Christ is one person in two natures, God and human, invisibly, inseparably. Okay. Application, walang words, pictures lang. It is very important na tayo ay not only individually to study God's Word, but to come with others, to study the Word together. Lesson three, authentic disciples overcome with the indwelling Holy Spirit over spirit of error. Okay. So, kanina, the doctrine of the Bible, tapos doctrine of Jesus Christ, ngayon naman, doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Pakisabi na yung katabi mo. Oy, kising na. Six minutes na lang. Kaya natin yan. Verse 4. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Sino yung he dito? The Holy Spirit indwells in us. The very moment na talaga kang nanampalataya, sinuko mo ang buhay mo kay Jesus, tinanggap mo siya uh, bilang iyong Panginoon na tagapagligtas, yung totoo, the Holy Spirit indwells in you. Seals you. Isa sa mga ebidensya that the Holy Spirit is in you, kapag nasabi mo na, Panginoon Jesus, salamat sa iyong pagmamahal sa akin. Alam ko na meron akong buhay na walang hanggan. Hindi dahil sa aking gawa, kundi dahil sa iyo, Panginoong Jesus. At dahil sa iyo, lahat ng aking kasalanan na napagpatawad na. If you can sincerely say that in your heart, it is the Holy Spirit affirming in you. Because from darkness to light, from, from death to life, from binigyan kanya ng understanding, illuminating your mind to the truth of who Jesus Christ is. And he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The Antichrist is out there. The Antichrists, the false prophets are out there. But the Holy Spirit who is in you is greater than them. So don't be scared. Dahil may four minutes na tayo, summarize natin. The Holy Spirit is God who is actively at work in the world. He dwells permanently, permanently, ah. Hindi umalis ang Holy Spirit sa inyo. He does permanently in every Christian, helps us to pray, equips and empowers us to serve God, strengthens and molds us to be more like Christ, and protects us to guarantee our eternal life. The Holy Spirit gives us understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and revelation. He grieves, works in the heart, leads and directs our life, intercedes, loves, knows our thoughts, giver of spiritual gifts, fellowship with us, he sees us unto eternal life.
Sabi sa verse 5, 1 John chapter 4, they are from the world, therefore they speak from the world and the world listens to them. Yung mga antichrist, yung mga wala talaga sa Panginoon, yung mga false teach- teachers, kung ano sabi nila, anong worldly wisdom ang ituro nila, tatanggapin niya ng ibang tao sapagat they are also from the world. But not for us. Because we are from God. Whoever knows God listens to the apostles. The us here refers to the apostles. They would listen to the apostles. Whoever is not from God does not listen to the apostles. But this we know, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. If you question what you read from here, continue to search. Talk to the leaders. Talk to me. Talk to the pastors. Talk to the elders. Help. We will help you to understand more. We do not declare that we know all, but we will guide you towards listening and hearing from God directly through the Holy Word. Because as disciples of Jesus Christ, the Lord calls us to check truth. It is very important that we know the truth, we live by the truth, so that we can pass on Disciple others with the word of God. Reliance on the Holy Spirit. Yun po ang kailangan natin. Reliance on the Holy Spirit. Take the time to quiet your heart. Go to the word of God. Get out of your business. Take a few minutes in the daytime. That's very crucial for us. Summary, check truth. Authentic disciples differentiate between God-led prophets from false prophets. Authentic disciples confess Jesus Christ incarnate. Authentic disciples overcome with the indwelling Holy Spirit over the false spirit. I know Medyo mabigat. Tama po ba? Lunod na ba? But we are glad that we have uh, growth groups where you can ask more, we can learn more, mapag in details. Uh, it's okay if hindi, hindi mo nag-grasp completely lahat na narinig ninyo. And so, we are also promoting the New Believers Growth Group by Elder Ruel. Where in, in that class, hihimayin po lahat yan. Para po makita nyo yung mga verses, mabasa together, makita saan makikita, yung mga katulang na yan, more so. So, if you're interested, Elder Wells, the good-looking guy over there in Maroon, na sumasaya. <laughs> or you can come to me, or you can message us at the church messenger or one of the elders here, pastors, just approach us and we'll be glad to help you out in, in checking the truth, in getting deeper to know what the Word of God is saying. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for you have given us your Holy Word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, who lives in us to teach us to equip us, to strengthen us. Thank you, our God, our triune God. The mystery of the Trinity is beyond us, O Lord. But we recognize that you are God and we are mere humans. But we are thankful, O Lord, that why would such a God be mindful of us? Why? May we humble ourselves before you and recognize that we need you and apart from you, we can do nothing. And we give thanks for your grace and mercies, for the gift of eternal life that you have given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. 
We pray with thanksgiving and rejoicing. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Holy Spirit, speak to us as we worship. After uh, checking the truth, let us now check the announcement. <laughs> announcement, after this worship service, we'll have the part two of our membership class downstairs. So yung mga maten po last Sunday, uh, part two po tayo, session two ng ating membership class. And then on February 28th, Magkakaroon po tayo ng water baptism. Pero uh, meron po kaming uh, um, kaunting pagbabago patungkol po sa water sa baptism. Hindi po natin magagawa dito. Kasi maliit po yung ating uh, um, baptistry. So 
We are planning na may schedule po sila. Mamaya tatanungin natin yung mga candidates um, per batch na lang po kung kailan sila available para yung paggamit natin ay safe naman po yung paggamit natin. Okay? And then, uh, on right hand of fellowship on March 7, during our anniversary worship service. Excited na po ba tayo sa ating anniversary? Amen? Wow, sobrang excited ang kanilang na... Uh... So, check it out, mga kapatid. After checking the truth, after checking the announcement, nag-check out po tayo sa worship hall na ito. But before that, we will pray for the benediction. Tayo po tayong lahat. Let us pray. To the God who deserves all glory and praise, we declare Jesus Christ incarnate, the one true God that we worship. May His love his grace, His mercies be upon you. May the prompting of the Holy One who lives in you continue to strengthen you, to grant you wisdom, to cover you with His love. We pray and ask all this in the mighty, beautiful name of Jesus Christ. God is great. 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 God is great.